Hello and welcome. In our sequence of videos on hypothesis testing, we have now come to the one sample t-test. A lot of learnings that we've had from the past videos would continue to add value to what we're going to do here. Let's get started. So when do we apply a one sample t-test? A one sample t-test is the right test when we want to compare the mean of a sample to a known population mean or a hypothesized mean. The assumptions of one sample t-test involve the sample to be selected randomly, the observations within the sample to be independent, and the normality of the parent population. Notice that if your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, you can bypass the assumption of normality of the parent population. But if your sample size in general is greater than 30, in case of one sample scenarios, you would prefer Z-test over a T-test. So you might be seeing some similarities between Z-test and T-test. That's what we're going to discuss next. If you see the test statistic, it's very similar to the way you saw it in case of Z-test. There's something new, however, which is known as degrees of freedom. In this case, it is N minus one, where N is the sample size. And in general, for T-test, N is less than 30. How did the Z-statistic look like? Z-statistic was like this. So the major difference here is that in case of a Z statistic, you were using the population standard deviation. One of the main assumptions was that you already know it. But in case of a T statistic, you don't have population standard deviation, you only work with the samples. Even in case of a Z test, we saw that we could use sample standard deviation for cases where N was greater than or equal to 30. But it is consistently the sample standard deviation that we're going to use in case of T test. So, so to summarize for a Z test, you had a choice between the population standard deviation and sample standard deviation, subject to a qualifying condition. But in case of a t-test, you're consistently going to use the sample standard deviation. There is no population standard deviation. So let's proceed with a problem. A food delivery app promises that the average delivery time for their online orders is under 45 minutes. However, a customer is skeptical and collects a random sample of 25 order deliveries. The customer wants to determine if there is sufficient evidence to support the belief that the average delivery time is more than 45 minutes. So the customer is trying to challenge what the company believes to be the truth. The customer claims that it is more than 45 minutes. His sample of 25 observations is given in the file called delivery times.csv. So we have the raw data from which we can calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation and proceed. Conduct a one sample t-test at a significance level of alpha is equal to 3%. See, I know that we used to of seeing it as 5%. That's why I've deliberately changed this to 3% in this example. It's not mandatory that alpha value is always 5%. Again, going with the steps that we've already seen in the previous videos, we know the level of significance, which is 3%. That's clear to us. Can we state the hypothesis? Null hypothesis is that the sample average delivery time is less than or equal to 45 minutes. Notice it will always be checked at equality, but in this case, we can state it as less than or equal to 45 minutes. What is the alternate hypothesis? This is what the customer is claiming, and he's claiming it's greater than 45 minutes. So we'll have to now compute the test statistic. Let's just list down what all do we know. So do we know the sample mean? Not yet. We'll have to calculate it from the raw data. Do we know the sample standard deviation? Not yet. We still have to calculate. Population mean is given to be 45, and we know that the sample size it was mentioned in the problem statement that 25 samples have been collected. And if 25 samples have been collected, then degrees of freedom would be 24. Let's just dive into the idea of degrees of freedom. What does it mean at a very intuitive level? And then we'll come back to solving this problem. Let's say I ask you to give me three random numbers and you come up with any random choices. You say the first number is 27. The second number is negative eight. And the third number is 50. I ask for three random numbers you gave me three random numbers. Did I put a condition? Not really. Now, if I would have asked, give me three random numbers such that their average is 60. Is there a condition now? Think about it carefully. What am I asking? Three numbers such that their average is 60. So let's say the first two numbers are the same that you gave me earlier, 27 and negative eight. But can the third number be 50? If you give me the third number as 50, then what would happen? So 27 minus 8, which is 19, plus 50, which is 69, divided by 3, because I'm asking you to give an average, 69 divided by 3 would be 23. But I'm asking the average to be 60. So you don't have the freedom now 
to choose the third number. There's a restriction. I asked for three numbers earlier without any condition. You could give me all three numbers freely. But when I ask you for three numbers now, such that their average is 60, you can choose the first two numbers. You have complete freedom. There is no condition. But for the third number, you don't have that freedom. It has to be a number such that when you add these three numbers and divide by three, the average is 60. So basically, you're solving this problem. This x is what you have to find out. And what would that x be? If you solve this equation, it will be 161. This is a forced value. You don't have the freedom. So in this case, if you see from three numbers, two numbers, that is three minus one, could be chosen freely. But the third number could not be chosen like that. Similarly, when you have n observations, n minus one numbers can be chosen freely, but the nth observation won't be free. That's why with n observations, you have n minus one degrees of freedom. Anyway, coming back to the problem. So we still don't know the sample mean and sample standard deviation. And this is what we have to find out from the raw data. Let me take you to a spreadsheet where we'll solve this problem now. All right, so we are here and we have the same problem stated here. These are the sample delivery times that this customer has collected. These are the 25 values, serial number one to 25, right? If you want to calculate the average, you can write the average function and you will get the average as 50.88. And if you want to calculate the standard deviation, you can use stdev.s. This is 11.41. So now we know the sample mean and sample standard deviation. This is the test the statistic. Let's plug these values here. So what do we know? We know the X bar, which is 50.88. We know the hypothesized population mean, which was the company's claim given to us as 45 minutes here. As you can see, we can divide it by the sample standard deviation, which is 11.41. And if you see the sample size is 25, so square root of 25 would be five. And since this is in the denominator here of the denominator, we can bring it to the numerator. So I can write it like this. And this value is 2.5767. We can round it off to two decimal places. That will be 2.58. So this value that we have computed here is known as the test statistic. Can we translate this into a p-value and compare it with the alpha, which is 0 0.03? So in order to do that, we have a formula here which is nothing but t distribution. Here, we can put the value of x, which is 2.58 approximately. The degrees of freedom. So a t distribution, remember, is characterized by its degrees of freedom. That will be 24 in this case, 25 minus 1. And it is a cumulative calculation. Again, this comes to 0.9917. Will this be the answer? Let's understand what is this visually. We've explained similar aspects in the case of normal distribution or one sample Z test earlier, but this in our case is a T distribution with the 24 degrees of freedom. It looks somewhat similar to the bell curve, but it's a little different in the properties compared to normal distribution. And what we've done here is we've marked a 3% region. This gray shaded region is the 3% region because that's what is given to us as the level of significance. Now, the boundary of this shaded region is the critical value. And where does our test statistic fall? So can we see that this green dotted line, which is the test statistic, is falling in this critical region, in this rejection region? Area covered to the right of this green line is also less than the overall area covered by the critical region or the alpha value. So both the ways, from a critical value approach, this is clearly falling in the rejection region. From a p-value approach, in this case, the p-value, as we see with this blue shaded region, is of course less than the overall gray shaded region. That's why we will reject the null hypothesis. Anyway, coming back to the way we were solving it, we got the area under the curve, which is always from left to right. So what we saw so far in our calculations was this area, which is the area from the left to this green dotted line. And this is the area under the curve. Now, in order to find this blue shaded region, we'll just have to do a one minus there. So if I were to calculate the p-value, that will be one minus this shaded region. This is 0 0.083. And our alpha, as stated in the problem, is 0 0.03. Of course, 0 0.008 is less than 0 0.03. So p-value in this case, as we can state, is less than alpha. And when that happens, we've discussed this earlier, we reject the null hypothesis. At what confidence? This time, the confidence will be 97% because your alpha is 3%.
one minus alpha is confidence, right? So with the 97% confidence, we can reject the null hypothesis, which means the average delivery time is greater than 45 minutes. The customer was right in claiming that while you publicize, you deliver in less than 45 minutes, you actually take more time. Let's solve the same problem in Python. It's, it's going to be quite straightforward. All right, so in this case, we'll have to call a couple of libraries. Since we are going to read a CSV file, we'll need a library called pandas here, and we are importing that as PD. We already have a function, a built-in function for one sample t-test in the SciPy library and stats module. So we are just calling that function here, and we're simply reading the data. So read CSV is being used to read the CSV file, which has these observations. Once we read the file, this is how the observations come up. And we can use the function, which is t-test one sample. We have to mention the sample. We have to mention the population mean or the hypothesized mean. And what type of alternative hypothesis are we checking for? So we are checking for a greater than hypothesis. The customer is claiming that the delivery time is more than 45 minutes. If you run this, this is how you'll get the answer. The test is statistic, as you can see, is approximately 2.58, which is what we had there. And the p-value is 0 0.0083. That's exactly what we computed in Excel, 0 0.0083. So the conclusion is going to be the same. The p-value is less than alpha. And the test statistic falls in the critical region. So we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis with 97% with confidence. With this, we come to an end of this video. In the subsequent videos, we are going to talk about more hypothesis tests from the t-distribution family. Keep watching.